welcome back uh, today's topic is decision problems of context free grammars as we know regular grammars and context free grammars and its languages regular languages and context free languages are uh, very limited in their descriptive power okay so these context free grammars are uh, used to make some decisions only their answers is always either yes or no or true or false or accept the string or reject the string only it's not possible to do the calculations do the subtractions do the computations there are some decision problems answered by the context free grammars i listed this a uh, first one is whether a context free grammar is empty or not then second one is whether a given context free grammar is finite or infinite then third one is whether a particular string w is generated by a given context free grammar or not it's like a membership problem then fourth one is whether the given context free grammar is ambiguous or not ambiguous this is we are very familiar with this then fifth one is whether two given context free grammars have a common word a common string then sixth one is whether two different context free grammars generate the same language i mean generate the same context free language or not then seventh one is whether the complement of a given context free language is is also a context free language or not see uh, let me prove one by one by taking some examples so take the first one cfg is empty or not so let me prove this by taking some examples let's check first decision problem whether the given context free grammar is empty or not by taking some example let's assume the context free grammar g equals to v comma t comma p comma s where v is variables t is terminals p is the set of productions and yes is the start symbol see if yes derives any string you can say the given grammar is non empty for example yes not derives any string let's say the string is empty so that the given grammar is empty okay so let's take this example check whether the following context free grammar is empty or not the given grammar is s tends to a b slash d a tends to small a capital b capital c then b tends to small b capital c c tends to d then d tends to capital c capital d let's try to derive some string from this grammar so if i take s tends to a b so it is s tends to capital a capital b then so a can replace with to small a capital b capital c small a capital b capital c b then you know b can replace with small b capital c small b capital c capital c b now c can replace with d so replace it a b d c b c can replace with d a b d d now b can replace with what b c now it is a b d d b capital c now c can replace with small d it is a b d d b d so it derives this thing what is that string a b double d b d so the given context free grammar is non empty similarly i take another grammar check whether the following context free grammar is empty or not s tends to a b capital d a tends to b c b tends to small a capital c c tends to b then d tends to capital b capital d okay let me derive some string if if we are successfully derive some string we can say this grammar is non empty if we are unable to derive at least one string from this grammar we can say this grammar is empty s tends to 
capital A, capital B, capital D. Now A can replace with B, C, I mean capital B, C, B, D. Now B can replace with small a, capital C, small a, capital C, capital C, capital B, capital D. Now C can replace with what? Small b. Now it is a, small b, c, b, d. Now C can replace with small b. Now it is a, b, 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 d. Now B can replace with small a, c. Now it is a, b, b, small a, capital C, capital D. Now capital C can replace with B. So A, B, B, A, B, C, D. C, D. Now this C can replace with what? B. So A, B, B, A, B, then B, C, D. Okay. Then D can, I mean, yeah, it is D. Okay. Now D can replace with B D again. Okay. So it is not deriving any string. So the string is empty. Because of this grammar, we are unable to derive at least one string. That's why it is empty. So we take in two examples. First example, context-free grammar is not empty because it generates some string. Second example, it's not generating any string. That's why it is empty. Second decision problem is whether a given CFG is finite or infinite, meaning that the given CFG generates a finite length of the string or infinite length of the string, we have to find out. Okay, let's find out by taking some example. Before taking examples, let me tell you what it meant by how you can check finite of the grammar or infinite of the grammar is. So write a grammar G equals to V comma T comma P comma S. First convert this grammar into the Chomsky normal form. You know what is the form of the Chomsky normal form is A tends to B C A tends to A only. Okay. Yes. Take first example. Is a grammar S tends to A B, A tends to double B, B tends to A. You observe this is the Chomsky normal form. I am asking is a finite or infinite meaning that is this grammar generates a finite length of the strings or infinite length of the strings how you can cross check this is you need to construct a director graph for this a director graph contains the vertices with an director edges vertices represents only variables in your grammar s a b only let me construct this see s is the root node yeah yes s tends to a and b so how we can draw the this is a and this is b so this is the director graph then a tends to b b uh, no need to draw uh, two edges only one edges a tends to b a tends to b yeah then b tends to a terminal we cannot write okay c in director graph there is no cycle exist if there is no cycle exist in this uh, director graph, we can say it is the finite grammar, uh, meaning that this context free grammar generates only strings which is of finite length only. Let me take this example, apply the same procedure whether it is find out whether it is a, a finite or infinite. So first construct the director graph for this uh, grammar, S tends to A, B. So S tends to A, then B, yeah, then A tends to B, B, so A tends to B, yeah, then B tends to A and S, so B tends to A and S, you cross check, is cycle is exist in the, is exist in the director graph? Yeah, S tends to A, A tends to B, then B tends to S. Cycle exists. If cycle exists in the director graph, we can say this grammar is infinite grammar. Infinite means this grammar generates strings which is of length infinite also. So this is about the how we can check finite and infinite nets of the context-free grammar. Third Asian problem is 
whether a particular string w is generated by a given context free grammar or not it's like a membership problem see i have a context free grammar g equals to v comma t comma p comma s now i'm asking whether the string w is the member of the language generated by this context free grammar or not this is my question okay so take some grammar example so take one string you cross check whether this string is belongs to this grammar generated by this language or not okay anyhow it's a lengthy topic so some algorithm is there i'm going to prepare a separate lecture regarding this third decision problem fourth decision problem is whether a given context free grammar is ambiguous or not we know how you, when you can say the given grammar g is ambiguous or not in means for at least one string in its language if it generates more than a one past t or more than a one leftmost derivation or more than a one rightmost derivation you can say that grammar is ambiguous otherwise the grammar is not ambiguous this is the decision problem then fifth one is whether two given context free grammars have the common string honors for example let's take g1 is one context free grammar g2 is one context free grammar i am writing some string w and i want to check whether this w is belongs to this g1 and the same w is belongs to the grammar g2 or not this is my question this is my decision problem okay then sixth one is whether two different cfg generate the same language or not okay let's say for example i have a context free grammar g1 and context free grammar g2 is this two context free grammar generate the same language or a different language that is my question then next one is the seventh decision problem whether the complement of a given context free gram context free language is also a context free language or not for example let's assume l is l1 is a context free language then its complement l1 is also a l1 complement is also a context free language then take l2 is a context free language then complement of its language l2 complement is also a context free language let's assume okay if i do the union of these two l1 complement union l2 complement is also a context free language see what is meaning of this one l1 complement union l2 complement equals to l1 intersection l2 as you know l1 intersection l2 i mean intersection of the two context free language is not a context free language okay so based on this so complement of the any regular language is not a context free language okay so if you do this it is giving it is a context free language if you do by using de morgan's law by using the intersection operation if you cross check it is not a context free language meaning that a context free language the complement of a context free language may be a context free language or else the complement of a context free language may not be a context free language so this is the proof by contradiction based on this we can say complement of a context free language is not a context free language so this is all about the decision problems of the context free grammars and its languages